Hello everyone. Um welcome to Counterpoint Conversations. This is your host Mohit Agrawal and we are recording this video at DTW event in Copenhagen. And today I have with me Chief AI and Data Officer at uh, Rakuten Group, uh, Think Sai. Uh, welcome to the conversation thing and thank you for uh, for this interview. And before we start, can you talk a little bit about the Rakuten Group and maybe introduce yourself what you are doing at Rakuten and uh, how does your day look like? Okay, of course. Uh, thank you uh, Mohi for the opportunity. And uh, so, uh, you know, I lead the AI and data strategy at Rakuten Group. Uh, you know, uh, Rakuten is uh, truly a very unique company. And previously, before Rakuten, I worked at Google, Microsoft, and startups. Um, but uh, Rakuten has a very, probably the most diversified uh, product portfolio across uh, mobile, financial services, and e-commerce. Uh, it's a lot of fun uh, to kind of uh, operating and push the boundary of AI and data in this environment. Yeah, and uh, since you mentioned that uh, Rakuten is a very, very diverse group and you are there from maybe fintech to loyalty points to mobile. So how does that shape the AI strategy that you have? Because uh, instead of going specific to our particular business, you are covering so many different diverse groups. So how does that work? Yeah, so that's kind of, a, in my view, probably the best or the uh, most fantastic playground for AI and data. And because if you think about the latest generation of AI technology, it's very universal. It's super good at pattern recognition and, you know, we can leverage it to mat to do matching, right? And so in terms of uh, uh, matching user to any of the services across Rapid and Google. Uh, so we like to build things from ground up uh, from by building embeddings for like almost everything in our ecosystem, people, place, and things. So we can help uh, users to discover new services and products that then they may not even aware of. Uh, whether it's a search, recommendation, or advertising, uh, with the Deep Learning Foundation, uh, we, can do the, we can do a better job of uh, matching and help users discover what they like to see, and then also help the business to grow as well. Right. And if I look at Rakuten Group, so the different services that you have, they are kind of interrelated in some way or the other so that uh, you are able to benefit. So is your AI strategy the same wherein uh, what you have for one group, you are able to leverage it in the other businesses? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think, you know, we have a very diverse portfolio and they may all look very different from a, a beauty salon to golf courses to online shopping to credit card, but it's all about identifying a user need and identifying a business opportunity to offer better services um, to our customer. And then we go after that market, right? And with AI, uh, we can better leverage the learning, uh, our interaction with the user from one service and apply it to another. All right. And AI is nothing new. I mean, we have been talking about AI for the last, what, four decades, five decades. It has been a long time. Uh, it's just in the last couple of years uh, after the advent of uh, GPT models or the foundational models, it has changed a lot. So how has uh, your roadmap changed in the last few years? Uh, have you moved from more pattern recognition towards the generative AI or how does uh, how does it work? Yeah, so I would say the recent uh, advancement of AI is really uh, universal. And I think before we were building specific model for specific purposes. Now, you know, there's this one gigantic model that can do almost anything, right? So, and it has better ability to understand the user intent, um, you know, understand the human language, understand the visual and the audio. Uh, so that the fundamental capability is you're like applicable to so many different scenarios. So that also, um, like amended us to build um, a centralized solution that is powerful and applicable. And at the same time, uh, there's opportunity to build uh, specialized uh, AI models that is super cost effective to run uh, for specific purposes. All right, and you, you spoke about uh, the foundational models. So you're building your own foundation model or what's your strategy around that? I think we have been all along pushing the frontier of AI research. Uh, whether it's uh, building uh, language-specific uh, models or building smaller models that could be as powerful as bigger models. 
you know, by training models for specific purposes with specific data and building the flywheel uh, to continuously enhance the model with our domain expertise, and that seems to be a proven formula to produce the most cost-effective model, uh, you know, for our services. Yep. Okay, and that's very exciting. Uh, but one of the things that we have noticed in different corporates that uh, AI as a technology is very good, but it requires a lot of uh, culture change. So internally, how, how are you tackling with that? Because people really, really don't want to change as much. Uh, and there is always a threat to their job as well uh, with the AI. I mean, there is so much of noise around it. Uh, so how did how do you manage the culture change within the organization? So I think uh, you know Rapidin is a st started as a startup company, and innovation and entrepreneurship has always been um, part of our culture. So I have been encouraging my team to stay curious, and uh, um, you know we want to build the best um, AI uh, models out there, and also partner with the best tool and uh, other companies out there, right? So we try different uh, different tools, so we want to leverage the best. Uh, so I, I believe that in the future, people who can leverage AI, you know, will thrive. And if you don't play with it, then you automatically uh, out of the out of the wave. So uh, it's very important that everyone pick up this latest tool uh, so you are uh, better equipped uh, to tackle the challenge just tomorrow. All right. And the initiative, the AI initiative, is it more centralized uh, at the moment or uh, uh, is the initiative that is being taken at different levels within the organization? You know, I think the entire company is embracing AI. We are infusing AI into every product and services, uh, not only improving the internal employee productivity, but also reducing the cost, but also, and more importantly, growing the revenue. Um, so we do have a centralized organization uh, focusing on AI and data. And uh, so we're providing full stack solution from uh, uh, from data, you know, and the model and API and also new X integration, right? And so businesses can make the uh, make the have the flexibility to integrate in different ways. Right. Uh, and I mean, come to think of it, uh, there is always a lot of concern among different uh, ecosystem players, different uh, people who are watching this space yeah. about. Uh, being responsible AI, ethical AI. So what are the guardrails that you are basing within your organization to make it more responsible? Yeah, so we published a Rupton AI code of ethics, but more importantly, this is not, not just a guideline. We put it into operations. Uh, we think of uh, AI uh, safety uh, like uh, cybersecurity. So you have to make sure that our AI, you know, the conversation we are having user is a safe 24 by 7. So that's why we have AI firewalls, we have uh, AI safety monitoring, we are continuously in production. Right, right. And and finally, my final question to you will be like, uh, I mean, this space is changing a lot. Uh, so is there one trend within the AI space itself that you're very excited about in the over the next few years? Yeah, I think one, one trend for sure is it's continuously evolving in a very fast pace. And um, I'm particularly personally very excited about uh, audio uh, portability. Um, so, you know, right now I'm actually more and more of my writing, whether it's writing a product proposal or business idea, you know, it's done on the fly using speech. Yeah. So, and so that's, I, I think it will become more and more mainstream. All right. So, so the user interface is going to change. Like we type a lot, but you're saying it will be more audio driven audio driven and I think it's right now you know speech is already faster than I could type <laughs> absolutely agree with you and uh, thank you thank for your time uh, really appreciate your time and uh, for our uh, viewers uh, uh, thank you for tuning in uh, until the next one thank you thank you